This morning loading topsoil, the skiddy overheated. I knew I had to change the radiator, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. I bought it last year. So uh, loading topsoil this morning, overheats. I get out, coolant's pouring all over the ground. So uh, yeah, now we're here. Anyways, trying to find the leak, got the radiator out. I've literally just been pulling everything out of the bottom of uh, underneath the engine just so I could see what's going on, where the leak's coming from. I've never pulled the cab on this thing or any skiddy that I can think of, uh, but we're going to do it today. I just watched a YouTube video, so we're more than qualified to do it. Um, but I have to pull the cab because there's just not enough room to get in there and see what's going on. So I'm going to show you how to do that because there was only one video that I could find close to this model of popping the cab. It's actually really easy. However, I have the radiator pulled out. I got rigged in the hoses. I have to start it to get the boom up. Probably not the greatest idea, but at this point, I guess we just got to do what we got to do, and it is what it is. So we're going to fire it up, get the boom up, and then I'm going to show you how to pop the cap. And this is my first time, and if it's your first time, well, then we can fail together. Because failure is essentially success if you uh, <laughs> learn from it, right? All right. So we're gonna move quick here. I don't like uh, like what's going on back there, but I'm not gonna rev it up. Everything looks kosher so far. Uh, my bolts are low, I think, because I was leaking hydraulic fluid, or sorry, coolant. My belt was slipping, so while we're in there, we're gonna tighten that up too. Uh, we better give it a little juice, huh? On the video I watched, this pin was the safety pin that held the boom from coming down. He never showed how to get that pin out. However, common sense says there's got to be some sort of a lever, which I'm assuming is inside the cab probably, down on the uh, passenger side section of the seat. So let's see if that is it or not. That lever, I'm assuming, is that right there. Um, I wouldn't recommend walking underneath an extended boom. Uh, I'm usually running solo here, so if I had a buddy, I would make him do it. But for this particular situation, it's going to have to be me. Definitely not the right button. I don't have a manual for this thing, so luckily I am by myself because that was the boom release uh, in case maybe this thing died on you. Because <laughs> look at that uh, came down. So we did the exact opposite of what we wanted to do. However, failure is success if you learn from it. Now I know what that button does, and it lowers the boom in the event that you lose the uh, power uh, so back to the cab okay there's another one here that I didn't see because I had my strap I'm guessing that this is going to be the right one because common sense says that the lever on the same side as the pin would more than likely be the lever to pull so let's give her a go Okay, that was it. My bad for uh, not using all my common sense. So that pin is a safety lock for the boom and the lever for it is right there. You just twist it, you don't pull it. So now we're safe. 
We can move freely underneath this boom with, well, 80% confidence that that pin's gonna hold. And so now, let's get these bolts off and get this cab now flipped up. Right side drop, left side lock. Right drop, left lock. My right, your left. My left, your right. Right drop, left lock. So a 15 16 fits just fine. And a 24 mil also fits just fine. There's a little bit of play. At this point, I don't really care which one I'm going to use. I think maybe I'll just do a 24 mil on this side and a 15 16 on the other side just because we can. Let's see whichever one feels better. But remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. And uh, you can't really get in here and take too big a cranks. So just be patient. Now that it's loose enough, I'll use my open end. I just really don't feel like busting up my knuckles, to be honest with you. There's grease all over this, it's slippery. And uh, yeah, I'd rather not. But anyways, I'm gonna get these bolts off and uh, we're gonna get this cab flipped. We gotta quit dinking around. We gotta get stuff done. I should also inform you guys that uh, I am not a mechanic whatsoever. I actually hate cranking on engines and doing stuff like this because everything is just challenging for me personally. I would rather just build a table or a desk or something out of wood. However, I also hate bringing my equipment or my motors to people and giving them a bunch of money for something that I probably could have done if I just tried. So I guess point being made, just try. And if you fail, you can always go to plan B and that's bring it to somebody. However, that's not an option here. One, because it's not an option. In that video I watched, it was the two bolts and he said that the cab flipped right over. There is a hinge system on the uh, right side, which I think is a gas hinge to help kind of lift this thing. So I'm just gonna pull on it and see what happens. Make sure that your bolt pin is out so you don't have to worry about this thing landing on you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, well you know what? These are stationary so maybe they're uh, foot levers. That, that wasn't too bad actually. And yes, I'll take you in here and show you, but uh, that hinge system, it must have been for alleviating uh, the, the weight of that cap because it really wasn't that heavy. At least not for me. I mean, I'm kind of a bigger guy, so I just kind of put a little weight in. Here's that hinge I was talking about. It definitely was for helping uh, lift the cab. So you can see it was on that right side. There's a lot of pinch points in there. Uh, I don't know if there is a cab lock now or not, uh, but I would suggest being careful if you're down dinking around in there that this thing doesn't come landing on you. But uh, maybe we should try to push it and see how much, maybe there's a lock on that. Oh yeah, see, so there's gonna be a lock on this, which allows that to come back down. So yeah, once the cab's up, it ain't gonna fall on you. So uh, I'll show you how to unlock that too when we uh, cross that bridge, cause I don't know how to do that, but we're gonna figure it out. But for the meantime, we're gonna try to find that coolant leak and seeing how we're in here, I'm gonna clean some of this uh, 
debris out of here. I got sticks and leaves and pine needles. Just a disaster. I've had it. I'm no doctor, people, but with about five minutes of diagnosis here, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a big rip or tear, whatever you want to say. I'll say, I'll say a, it's a rip. Uh, well, I guess it does look a little bit more like a tear. Uh, however, that must be our problem. So I'm going to pull this hose off here and it runs right along here right along here and into our water pump if you can see that I think it's the water pump I don't know like I said I'm not a mechanic but I know that that torn hose takes hydro <sighs> coolant one of these days I'll figure out what I'm trying to say takes the coolant and circulates it through the engine and that's an easy fix I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here I'm a praying man and this morning when all that coolant was pouring out, I thought for sure that this block cracked. I had been neglecting changing that radiator and I thought it just finally plugged up enough to where it overheated, got hot enough and finally said, this is what you get for not fixing what was broken when you needed to fix it. However, I was limping the skitty back to the shop and I'm like, Lord, please let this be an easy fix. And sure enough, it was an easy fix. And he works in mysterious ways because right now it's topsoil season and it's gonna be getting busy. And I needed to change that radiator, but I was procrastinating, procrastinating. It wasn't really on the priority list, but it is. So this literally forced me to do it. So point being made, sometimes bad things happen for good reasons. And this was it. And that's why I'm a praying guy, because I've never done any of this before. It's very intimidating, but it's actually fairly simple. I've had a squeaky belt, so I'm going to get that fixed. I'm going to get this thing cleaned up. I'm going to be pushing dirt, and I'm going to have AC this summer, so I'm not sweating bullets down in the pit. This is good stuff. Our new hose is in. Now we're gonna go around the back side and tighten some belts. So here's our alternator. I've been getting a low voltage uh, code on the skiddy. So we're gonna tighten that up. It doesn't look like there's any sort of tension or anything. I think it's just this bolt and then we'll use something to kind of pry it and tighten it back up to make some tension. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to film that because I'm gonna need two hands. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll come back and see how we did here in a second. Two. Oh! Whoa! <laughs> so we got a 13 mil. I'm gonna loosen this bolt here. Try not to break this wrench. <clears throat> yep, that was a little, a little tight. Now I'm going to get a uh, pry bar and wedge it in here. Give that some tension. See if we can get that tightened up. So I, I guess, I don't know if this is how you do it, but this is how we're going to do it. I got my pry bar in there and you can see I'm uh, getting some pretty good pressure. So I would say... Uh, this should work. I don't know if there's a specific torque that it has to be or not, but I'm just going to get it to where I think is going to prevent the belt from slipping. Let's try that. Yeah, that's, that's a lot tighter. Um, you probably can't tell by looking at it, but 
there's a lot more tension on it. That's okay. So this belt here is very, very tight. I can pull it right off. Obviously being pretty sarcastic. Uh, so that's gonna need to be tightened. Uh, and I believe it's this bolt right here. So I'm gonna start cranking on it and see if that is indeed it. Well, as you can see here, I got a bolt that I found that just so happens to be the right length thread and uh, 13 mil. This bolt had fallen out somewhere along the lines and uh, that was why I was losing tension in my belt and getting squeaking. So I don't think it was coincidence that I just happened to find a bolt in the junk bin that fit that perfectly. That is why I pray people. It's not like you have anything to lose. So this is a radiator I bought a year ago and now I'm finally just getting it in. You can see the box is completely dusty. So uh, I guess I don't know what brand radiators everybody uses, but this is the brand I'm gonna be using. And uh, let's see how it goes in. Well, we run into our first issue. So these holes line up, those holes do not. I don't have enough time to send this thing back. Yeah. And so we're just gonna have to so, modify we had it to these be brackets. A, what do I have to do? I gotta blow my nose. I gotta what? I gotta blow my nose. Why? Because, look at Whoa, yeah. Well, we've done it. The new radiator's in. I just drilled some new holes in the brackets. They're fine, that'll work. It's full. Now, we're gonna be tipping the cab back down. And all you have to do is just lift that all the way up. Yeah. Okay, Lucy, stand back. You lift it all the way up like that? Yep. Okay, ready, let's push it down. Here, help me. Push right there. Ready? Push. And it sits down nice and easy. Watch your fingers. And there you have it. Calves down. Now remember, these bolts in both sides and uh, we should be good to go. Uh, one quick thing is there's air in the system. So what they call it, when you uh, flush your system or uh, put in a new radiator, you got to get the air out. It's called burping. And I think you got to go on a little bit of an incline. And I think the front end has to go down so that all the air can come up. I'm not sure if you have to do that in skiddies, but we're gonna just to make sure. Sword fight. Don't forget to put your pin back in. So you can't tell, but I'm on a little bit of a decline here. Um, from what I remember, you want the cap at the highest level and you want to get this cap off and to burp your system be very careful because you have your fan spinning down there but you just reach in here and you just squeeze that hose and it kind of pushes the water through or sorry the coolant through and I can see it's bubbling pretty good in there, so hopefully that's doing what I'm assuming it's doing, I guess. I'm gonna let this run just a little bit with the cap off, and then I'm gonna get a little bit more coolant. I put four gallons in. I'm gonna need probably just a little bit more. So, quick conclusion on yesterday's bad situation. Ended up being a series of positive events, actually. Skitty broke down and because of it, we no longer have that ratchety old radiator in there. Skitty's no longer gonna overheat on me. I now have AC, the belts no longer squeak and that old hose that I would have not known was bad is now brand new. So I'll admit I was a little frustrated when it first happened, but now I'm excited even though 
I didn't get things done yesterday that I wanted to get done, it doesn't matter because it was well worth it. Because one, I now have a newfound confidence in jumping feet first into something that goes wrong on the skid steer. Will the next time turn out this good? I don't know. Hopefully that next time isn't for a long time. But more importantly, I hope that I've helped influence or educate somebody else. I don't know how many people are looking to pop a top on a 2013 New Holland skid steer, lock a pin, raise a boom, tighten a belt, change a radiator. Uh, it got kind of lengthy, but as life would have it, there's always something else. So if you made it this far, hopefully you like, hopefully you share, and if you have comments that'll make my life a little bit easier, I'll definitely consider them because we're all here to help each other and if we piggyback off of each other, well, when life comes to give us a headbutt, it won't hurt so bad. So thank you guys and hopefully you'll be on the next one. And yes, I almost forgot. I did technically forget, but I almost forgot in the sense that I remembered so I didn't fully forget, but I guess you gotta subscribe because that's kind of important for this YouTube stuff.